Hey guys, welcome to Saxon Algebra 1, 3rd edition. And uh, you are a very lucky young person. Your mom and dad must care for you a lot to get you Saxon math or possibly really hate you a lot because they're punishing you. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, you're going to do a great job this year. You're going to be very successful unless you're very unsuccessful. In which case, no, you won't, you'll be very successful. Saxon is awesome. If you like math, Saxon is great. If you hate math, Saxon is great because you do the same stuff that you don't understand very well over and over and over until you understand it. And then you do it extra until you're sick of it, which means you've really got it. So it's awesome, awesome program. Um, I'd like to say that I was proud to know John Saxon, the author of your math book, personally. But I can't because I never met the guy in my life. Uh, so anyway, we'll go on and uh, start today. And uh, it's going to be a great year of math. So let's start with some old stuff here first, which is adding and subtracting fractions. And of course, if they have the same denominator, you can just go across and go, that's 10 over 13. Add them that way. If they have different denominators, your job, and this is why you memorize your times tables. One of the reasons why is so you can do these quickly you'll recognize that the least common uh, multiple of 8 and 12, the uh, smallest number that 8 and 12 both go into are 24. So you can change your fraction. 8 times 3 is 24. 3 times 3 is 9. 12 times 2 is 24. So 5 times 2 is 10. And you'll get 19 over 24. All right? Okay. Let's subtract. Same thing. We need a common multiple. Well, you probably recognize it's going to be 30 for both of those numbers. <clears throat> All right. So we have 7 over 10 is the same thing as 21 over 30. And 8 over 15, we're multiplying by 2. And so that'll be 16. 21 minus 16 is 5. 5 over 30 reduces because uh, 5 goes into both as 1 6. And just a note, anytime you need to pause and do problems, go ahead and pause it, you know, and write steps down. What I'm going to do the entire year is here and there give you really simplified, easy steps to follow that you don't have to do exactly what's in the book. I've simplified it for you or given you a nice uh, way to do it. I would strongly, strongly suggest this. In your notebook, like even today, I'd go ahead and start and do pieces of loose leaf paper that look, look like this. And at the top right of every single one of your lessons, I'd go like this. No, I don't want you to write a one on every single one of your lessons. I mean, just for today. So I would keep your notes here. And then maybe your problems that you, the practice problems that you do, you could do them on the next page or something like that. Or if you want, you can keep a notebook just for your notes. So what, in other words, if you're in Saxon and you're doing, you know, let's say we're 100 pages into it and you're on a problem and you'll see this next to the problem. Well, that is telling you that the way, when we learned to, how to do that problem was in lesson 27. And if you go, oh, I can't remember how to do that problem, what you can do is flip through your notes and look for the 27, which will do examples of how to do that. So you can figure out a lot quicker how to you know, solve that problem. So anyway, okay, let's keep going. If we add and subtract fractions uh, that are mixed numbers, what we'll need to do is, well, there's two ways to do this. You can either go ahead and rewrite this as a mixed, as a, an improper fraction. And you can say 5 times 13, that's 65. 65 plus 3 is 68 over 5. And 4 times 2 is 8 plus 3 is 11. So 68 over 5 plus 11 over 4. You can do it that way if you want to and then find it. You know, sometimes you get into giant numbers if you do that. Probably an easier way to do that is just to take this part and that part. We've already got 13 plus 2 is 15. So let's take 3 fifths and add that to 3 fourths. All right. Common denominator is 20, of course. And 3 fifths will be 12 over 20 because 5 times 4 and then 3 times 4. And then 4 times 5 is 20. 3 times 5 is 15. So we have 12 plus 15 is 27 divided by 20. Well, 20 goes into 27 one time, right? with seven left over out of 20. So we'll add one and seven twentieths to 15, and that'll give us 16. I think that is six, and seven twentieths. And that's probably the easier way to do that, all right? If you subtract, 
This is interesting. And what you'll have to do is to borrow in this case. So, because look at this, you're going to see 13, and then we'll just go ahead and do a, uh, you know, a common denominator again. And we said that was 12 20ths, right? Then minus 2 and 3 fourths is 15 20ths. Well, you, you, can, you, know, you can't go 13 minus 2 is 11 and 12 20ths. Wait, you can't take 15 20ths from 12 20ths. Can't be done. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to borrow one here, and that's going to be 12. So you're going to add, uh, you're going to borrow the one here, and then add the one here. Well, 1 with a denominator of 20 is just 20 over 20, right? So 20 over 20 plus 12 over 20 is 32 over 20. So what you'll actually do is you'll subtract the big number here. 12 minus 2 is 10. Then you'll say 32 minus 15, excuse me, 32 over 20 minus 15 over 20. And you can just do the arithmetic. It'll be 10 and 17 over 20. And there we go. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Same thing here. Why don't you pause it and try this? Pause the video and then do the arithmetic yourself and then see what you get and then unpause it when you're finished. All right, <clears throat> let's try it. We have 10 and then a fraction minus 4 and then a fraction. Well, 8 and 10, you might have said 80, and that would work. That's okay to do that, but you'd have to reduce the fraction at the end. Actually, it's easier to mess with a 40 because 8 and 10 both go into 40. So we have 10 and 3 eighths. 8 times 5 is 40. 3 times 5 is 15. And 10 times 4 is 40. 9 times 4 is 36. Well, you can immediately see, you can't say 15 fortieths minus 36 fortieths. Can't be done. So you will borrow one and call this a 9. <clears throat> what you're actually borrowing is 40 divided by 40. So you're going to add 15 fortieths plus 40 fortieths. So what you actually have is 9 and 55 fortieths minus 4 and 36 fortieths. Okay, well the 9 minus 4 is 5. 55 minus 36 is 19, and there we go. And that's your answer, Nine, uh, 5 and 19 fortieths. Okay, all right. If you have three different fractions, you're adding and subtracting, doesn't matter. You still do the same thing. We need to find a common denominator of 11, 6, and 3. Well, 6 and 3, that's pretty easy. That's just 6, right? Okay, so let's find 6 and 11. Well, not much to do other than just find out that 6 times 11 is 66. So we'll just rewrite the entire thing, something minus something plus something. All right, well, we're going to put 66 all the way across here. Okay, 11 times 6, so 10 times 6. 6 times 11, so 5 times 11. 3 times, and this might be a little bit di more difficult, but you can always do long division if you want to. But 3 goes into 66 22 times, and 1 times 22 is, of course, 22. All right, so we have 60 minus 55, it's gonna be five. Five plus 22 is 27, and over 66. And you go ahead and reduce that since three goes into both of those numbers. That'll be nine, and three goes into 66 22 times. And there we go, okay. All right, let's try another one. Uh, looking at lines and segments, let's, uh, a line is basically, it's, it's indicated in algebra like this. It's just an everlasting, endless, you know, line. It goes off in both directions, which we, what, that's what the uh, arrows indicate. A segment you could, is basically a chunk of a line that ends. Let's say, I don't know, let's say you have an A and a B there. Well, you could say this is going to be, uh, if you say segment AB from here to here, you would go like that. But if you were to say line AB, which indicates it goes on forever in both, you'd go like this, and you put a little line with arrows on top of it. And you can add the segments together, of course, if you want to, right? If you had, uh, let's say, you know, I don't know, let's say AB is uh, 7 and 1 third, and then BC is 8 and 2 fifths, well then they would say, what is line AC? They'd say, what is line segment AC going to be, and you would just add those two together. That's all you need to do, okay? All right, for example, segment AC measures 13 and 3 fourths. So in other words, from here all the way to there is 13 and 3 fourths units. AB 
is four and five eighths. Doesn't look accurate at all, but anyway, we'll just say that it is, because that's way more than half. A four is not more, more than half of 13, anyway. Okay, so they say find BC. Well, what operation are you gonna use to find the length of BC? The entire thing is 13 and three quarters. This part right here, AB, yoink, that's just four and five eighths. So to find BC, we're going to have to subtract, right? So let's do it. We got 13 and three fourths minus four and five eighths. And this is one where we're gonna to have to go, oh, you can't subtract five eighths from, th well, we'll see if we can or not. Okay. All right. Three fourths and five eighths. Well, look at here. We got 13. What's the common denominator? It'll be eight. And that's gonna be five eighths. And then three fourths is the same as six eighths, right? Okay. So 13 minus four is nine. And 6 eighths minus 5 eighths is 1 eighth. So we actually are able to subtract that without having to borrow. Good. Okay. Okay. No practice problems today. So go right ahead to your problem set one and finish that up. And uh, we'll see y'all next time. Have a great day.